Sixth grade, module six, lesson six, classwork. Example one. Recall that in lesson three, Robert, a sixth grader at Roosevelt Middle School, investigated the number of hours of sleep sixth grade students get on school nights. Today, he is to make a short report to the class on his investigation. Here's his report. I took a survey of 29 sixth graders asking them, how many hours of sleep per night do you usually get when you have school the next day? The first thing I had to do was organize the data. I did this by drawing a dot plot. Looking at the dot plot, I would say that the typical amount of sleep is eight or nine hours. So we looked at this dot plot and said, the typical amount of sleep is eight or nine hours, which we'd agree that that's kind of with the middle of the distribution of the plot. Michelle is Robert's classmate. She liked his report, but has a really different thought about determining the center of the number of hours of sleep. Her idea is to even out the data in order to determine a typical or a center value. So this is something that we would call a mean, otherwise known as the average. So exercises one through six. Suppose that Michelle asks 10 of her classmates the number of hours they usually sleep when there is school the next day. Suppose they responded in hours 8, 10, 8, 8, 11, 11, 9, 8, 10, 7. How do you think Robert would organize this new data? What do you think Robert would say is the center of these 10 data points? So I think Robert would use a dot plot to organize the data. So, because that's what he did before. So Robert would use a dot plot. So then if we did a dot plot, it goes between seven and 11. So we have one, two, three, four eights, uh, two tens, and a let, two elevens, a nine, and a seven. So Robert would probably say that eight is the center of the data because um, it has the most, it's the most common value. So he would say the center is eight because it's the most common value. Number two, do you think his value is a good measure to use for the center of Michelle's data set? Why or why not? Um, so this is kind of an opinion. Your, your answer can vary from mine if you don't agree with me. I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best way because it's pretty skewed over here to the left side. Um, it's pretty far over here. We're pretty far from like some people had 11, some people had 10. So personally, I wouldn't say eight is the center. It is the most common. But, um, I mean, it depends what you want to say. So I'll say that um, I would not say this is a good, is a good measure. Because, I'm gonna say because if you're looking at it, more like half the data is larger than that. Is larger than eight hours. But you can have a different opinion than me. You don't have to have that same answer. Okay, the measure of center that Michelle is proposing is called the mean. She finds the total number of hours of sleep for the 10 students, that is 90 hours. So what she did is she added all of these up, added all of these and got 90. So everyone slept a total of 90 hours together. She has 90 unifix cubes, so she's those little snap cubes. You probably don't have them at home, but if you're working on it in school, maybe you have some snap cubes. She gives each of the 10 students the number of cubes that equals the number of hours they slept each had, they each had reported. So if they reported they slept 10 hours, they got 10 cubes. If they said they slept eight hours, they got eight cubes. 
She then asks each of the 10 students to connect their cubes in a stack and put their stack on the table to compare them. She then has them share their cubes with each other until they all have the same number of cubes in their stacks when they're done sharing. So they put them all together and then distributed them e equally. Make 10 stacks of cubes representing the number of hours of sleep for each of the 10 students. Using Michelle's method, how many of the cubes are in each stack when they are done sharing? So if you actually have the 90 cubes, which I don't, um, and if you're home at home, you probably don't either. If, we're just gonna imagine this. So you have 90 cubes, and you're dividing them by the 10 people. So each person would have nine cubes because 90 divided by 10 is nine. So everyone would get nine cubes in each of the 10 stacks. Okay. Number four, noting that each cube represents one hour of sleep, interpret your answer in exercise three in terms of the number of hours of sleep. What does the number of cubes in each stack represent? So each cube, remember we added all of these hours of sleep and got 90 hours of sleep. So 90 hours of sleep, or the cubes, would be each person is sleeping nine hours. So let's say nine hours of sleep, the nine cubes, nine cubes in each stack represent nine hours of sleep. This value is called the mean. Number five. Suppose the student who told Michelle he slept seven hours changes his data value to eight hours. So now instead of nine, 90 hours total of sleep, we have 91 hours of sleep because this kid changed his value. He upped it by one hour. What does Michelle's procedure now produce for her center of the new set of data? What did you have to do with that extra cube to make Michelle's procedure work? So now we have 91 cubes that we have to divide equally by 10 people. So 91 divided by 10, so we would have nine whole cubes, and then we have this one extra cube that needs to be split 10 ways. So we're gonna split that up in 10 different ways. That would be equal to 1 tenth each. So everyone's gonna get plus a tenth of a cube. So everyone gets nine and one tenth cubes. So the mean is now nine and one tenth. So it just increased that one whole hour, increased everyone's by a tenth of an hour the average. Number six, interpret Michelle's fair share procedure by developing a mathematical formula that results in finding the fair share value without actually using cubes. Be sure that you can explain clearly how the fair share procedure and the mathematical formula relate to each other. So we just what you have to do is you have to add all of the data together. So we'd add all the data together and then you divide it by however many there are. So here there are 10 so we would add all of these together and then divide by 10 or divide by however many you have. So let's say add all of the values together and then divide by the total number of values. Example two. 
Suppose that Robert asked five sixth graders how many pets each had. Their responses were two, six, four, or two, six, two, four, one. Robert showed the data with cubes as followed. So we have one, let's see, two twos, a one, this one's six, and here's the four. So he drew them all out. Then he also put them on a dot plot. And he said, note that one student has one pet, two students have two pets, one student has four pets, and one student has six pets. He also Robert, er, represented it on this dot plot. Michelle, Robert wants to illustrate Michelle's fair share method by using dot plots. He drew the following dot plot and said that it represents the result of the student with six pets sharing one of her pets with a student who has one pet. So the person who had six pets, she took one away, so she's now sharing with the one student who had one pet. So added one there. So that would make an extra one on the two, and we'd add one on five, because this one became, she took one away, so that became five, added one there, that became two. So this is what the new dot represents. So there's a dot on five and an extra dot on two. And the four stays the same and everything else stays the same. He also represented the dot plot above with cubes. His representation is shown below. So before it was a one, this was by itself, and it was up here. There was an extra cube up there. But then he combined it and gave it to the one with two. So that's where that came from. Now, continue distributing the pets based on the following steps. Robert does a fair share step by having the student with five pets share one of her pets with one of the students who has two pets. Draw the cubes representation that shows the result of this fair share step. So now, the person who has five, this one, is going to move to one of the ones with two. So we're going to have two, two, this is going to be three, this is going to be four, and then we'll have another four. So we took one away from here and added it there. So let's draw that representation. If you want, you can just draw boxes. Two, three, and then two fours. So it would look like that. Draw a dot plot that represents the result of this fair share. So we have two, three, and four. Two twos, a three, and two fours. Number eight, Robert does another fair share step. So we're trying to get it all to fair share. So we're gonna keep going until it's all combined into one number. So Robert does another fair share step by having one of the students who has four pets share one pet with the student who has two pets. So now we're gonna take one of these fours and share it with a two. So subtract one from there, that's gonna make another three. And then if we add one to there, that's going to turn that one also into a three. So we're going to have one, two, three threes, and a four. And then draw the dot plot. So we still have two, three, four. We have we had one, two, three threes, and a four. So we're getting closer. They're getting closer together. Okay. Nine. Robert does a final share step, fair share step, by having the student who has four pets share one pet with the student who has two pets. So finally we're gonna take this one, take one away and add it to this one. So if I take one away from four, that makes that a three. And if I add one to two, that makes that a three. So now we're left with nothing there, nothing there, 
and just five threes. So our fair share would look like this. And if we drew it in the dot plot, we would just have two, three, four, we would have one, two, three, four, five threes. So our mean would be three, or the average of all of those would be three. So the sharing method produces three pets for each person. each of the five students. Let's see, so, did we completely answer the problem? Explain in your own words why the final representations using cubes and a dot plot show the mean number of pets owned by the five students is three pets. So you can go back and kind of explain how we kept taking away from the four and adding the two and sharing and how when we get all the way down to it, it added up to everyone gets three pets and that is the mean. So let's say the mean is three.